These two moves allow them to retire. Oh my goodness, just two things? Yep, two things. I'm going to show you. It's going to be fun. We're going to go into right capital. I'm going to jump right into it. So we got Ann and Dan Sample here. All right. So Ann and Dan Sample are how old? I forgot. So we're going to go to family. Uh, Ann is 62. There she is. Dan is 65. There he is. All right. Their goals, they just retired at the end of uh, uh, last year. So they retired at the beginning of this year. So they've been retired for a full year. All right. Their retirement expenses are $4,000 a month. They also have health care costs. Um, Ann is on Obamacare at about 100 bucks a month. But Dan, because he's 65, is on Medicare at about $500 a month. So between them, they're paying about 700 uh, 600 bucks a month or 7200 bucks a year for health care costs. It could be more, could be less, probably a little bit more maybe, but in a couple of short years, Ann will be on Medicare as well. All right, let's keep going. So their income now, they got Dan just retired, so he's got no salary, right? So he got no salary. Ann is on Social Security right here, but she doesn't get much, and she's not even going to take it till she's 67. That's her benefit of 1200 bucks a month. And Dan's on Social Security, but he won't take his until he's at 70, and he'll get 2686 as his PIA. Now, we might uh, mess around with this a little bit in a real plan to see if it's better for her to, him to take at 67. We'll see. Either way, uh, that's his PIA. So if Ann waits until she's 67, she'll get half of that, which will be 13, uh, I don't know, 1343 a month as opposed to her own uh, 1204. So she'll get a little bit of a bump. All right, and that's it. No pension, no part-time income, no Social Security, nothing until until uh, they're at their full retirement age at the least. All right, we're going to expenses here. We already talked about that. We're going to have Dan live until he's 85, and we're going to have Ann live until she is, I think, 88, 86. All right, and again, Dan's three years older than Ann, so Ann will be a widow for four years. All right, so let's go to their net worth. Um they have 55000 in a bank account. They got 300000 in, I think, is Dan's IRA. Yep, 300000 Let's put that for Dan. Dan's IRA, uh, which is all in Wellington. All right? And they got a house that's worth $540,000. $540,000. The house are paying $5,000 a, a year in property tax, $2,500 a year in homeowner's insurance, and $1,000 a year in maintenance. And the house is appreciating at 2%, 2.5%, and the taxes are appreciating at 2%. Everybody with me? Oops. So. All right, again. So just, again, their goals are to spend 4000 a month. Uh, that's four, roughly 50000 a year. When they hit 70, it'll drop by 10%. So it goes 50000 a year, inflated, 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 drop by 10%. 50000 a year, inflated, 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 drop by 10% at 80. Um, all right. And let's see what we're giving them for an investment rate of return because it's all IRA. It's going to come out at taxable income. We're getting a 5.2% rate of return. with a, That's an average rate of return with a 10%, basically 11% standard deviation, which means uh, in this Wellington fund, we're, we're going to have a, what's that, 30, about 33%. It could be down 28% in the Wellington fund in any given year, which is, I think that's exactly what happened in 2008. So basically, we're saying on any bad year, uh, you could be down exactly what it was in 2008. This is just a, a proxy to say, what, what if I did the total stock market? It just You can get a little bit higher rate of return with a lot higher rate of downside risk. All right. So are they going to be able to retire? We're going to click retirement. And are they going to run out? Oh, they're going to run out of money. Look at that. Look at that. Oosh, only 12% probability of success. We go to confidence. And we see this dark blue, that's their median liquid net worth, median liquid net worth. And basically when they, uh, when Dan is, or I should say Ann is 75, uh, yeah, right there, 75, when Ann is 75, 50% of the time or more, they ran out of money. All right. And that's, that's not good. And so when Ann is 79, um, <laughs> uh, they uh, only, Five percent of the time they had a, they had uh, one hundred thousand dollars. So that's they're running out of money here pretty quickly actually. So that's that's not going to work. It's like wow, that's not good. Now it's very interesting. So you can see they they have a twelve percent probability of success, which means we come over here. You can see right there, uh, five percent of the time, at least five percent of the time that they, they had sixty six thousand bucks. But that's not. No one's going to say you should retire there. No way, no how. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to show you, but if we look at cash flows, 
We're going to look at their net worth. And even though they ran out of money here, this is their qualified assets, their IRA and their bank accounts gone. You know, they still have a pretty significant house of 700 worth 763,000. I'm again, I'm only inflating that at two and a half and you can see their house. So they're like, uh, the, the software is saying you're going to have to take on debt somehow, home equity line of credit, do something cause you don't have enough money. And so their net worth is 829,000 when they die. Um, that's on a linear basis, assuming a two and a half percent linear rate of return on the house. Uh, and the qualified assets, their IRA grows at, I think it's 5.1. Um, but anyway, you can see they ran out of money. There is no qualified assets. So the only thing they have is a house that's worth almost a million bucks and future numbers, though, which would be 540000 today. All right. Everybody with me so far? So let me do a couple changes here. All right. So first and foremost, I took a half of Dan's IRA and I made it into an income annuity for a five-year period certain. That's it. Five-year period certain. So you can see my IRA is now down to $150,000. I took half out. So let me show you how much that pays. So here we go to immediateannuities.com. We're going to get 2700 bucks a month for five years guaranteed. That's it. It doesn't pay for five years in one month. It pays for five years guaranteed. And at the end of five years, it is done. So 2755 times 12 gives us 30, uh, oops, 27, uh, no, times, times 50, I should say. 2755, well, I guess you could do five, times five, times 12. It gives us 33,000 a year of income. 33,000 a year of income. It will stop at the end of year five. So let's see what that looks like. So now they're doing SPIA, $33,060 a year, and you'll see it stops in the year 2027 after five years. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to uh, Wade Fowles Retirement Researcher, and we're gonna model a reverse mortgage. And basically we're using 500,000 as a property. We're using roughly 6% as our interest, give or take. What is that, it's four, two, six and a half percent as our interest rate, excuse me, six and a half is our interest rate. Um, we're going to say, we're going to take a 10 year payment. It's going to cost us what we say, our closing costs are 12,000 bucks. I think it's what I put for closing cost. Um, is that what I put? Closing cost. We, we'll add to that, but it's fine. Anyway, so we're going to put close, but anyway, our long story short, we're going to take a 10 year payment of 1100 bucks a month for the rest of our life. All right. 1100 bucks a month, 13,747 a year. We're going to put that in here. I think I had closing cost. Uh, let's do 16,000, I think is what it was. When all said and done, we're going to do, uh, how much did I say again? 13,000, uh, 747 a year, 13,747, 13,007, oops, let me just pause this real quick, 747. Hold on a second, let me pause. So what we did is we did a verse mortgage at, uh, basically 13,747 a year. We put closing costs in there. We put an annual fee. I have no idea what the annual fee is. We put an interest rate of six and a half and we're going to do that. Uh, it's going to start right now and it's going to end when they both die. All right. So I hope that makes sense. And then what we did, of course, we had to reduce the value of the, uh, the, the accounts to half to 150 because we reduced the value of the annuity of the IRA to do the SPIA. And then we still have this property. All right. So let's take a look here. What? Nothing else to change. Everything else is staying the same. That's it. Crazy. Huh? Oh my lands. We got a hundred percent probability of success and a median liquid net worth of $219,000. How could that possibly be Josh? Well, let's take a look. So our confidence is we're spending down our assets, spending down our assets until social security kicks in. All right. So you, you know, all right. So here's Ann. She's 62. They got a median net worth of $200,000, median liquid net worth, liquid net worth. They spend that down to social security kicks in. Now they got the annuity that's providing all their income. So with 150,000 that's left in the Wellington plus the 55,000 that's in their savings account, they're going to be spending that down until they hit, um, until they hit social security and social security kicks in. And now their liquid net worth is actually growing because social security is kicking in. The annuity goes away. Social security more than smokes what the annuity was paying, but it also getting the reverse mortgage at the same time. So check this out. All right. So we're looking pretty good. Um, I mean, that's fantastic. Let's go to cash flows. Just look at my dogs. You're so doggone cute. We go to income flows. Here's the annuity and the reverse mortgage. 46,000, uh, roughly yeah, is that 40, eh, a little bit less than 4,000 a month. 46,000 a year is what their income is. All right. Now they sp expenses are 63,000 a year because they have 4,000 a month in monthly expenses. Health housing is uh, 8,500. Healthcare is over $500 a month. You can see the healthcare jumps up once Anne's on Medicare. 
Anyway, so they're spending about five thousand a month, but they don't have five thousand a month coming in. They only got they got less than four thousand, so they still got to dip into their portfolio. So here they're taking seventeen thousand dollars out of a portfolio that's only worth one hundred fifty. Here they're taking eighteen thousand out of a portfolio that's only worth one hundred fifty. Here they're taking twenty four and thirty one. So if we go to accounts, we'll see that portfolio is going to be down to one forty seven. You know, again, we're assuming a 5.1% rate of return. This is a look. This is a linear rate of return. I don't think you'd want to make that assumption too much. But even if we go to a Monte Carlo, which is a random scheduled rate of return, we're not running out of money. We go to confidence right here. Even if we don't get the actual 5.1, you know, here we are. Some pretty low probability uh, things happening. But even there, we're still down to 87,000 bucks. So that looks pretty good. So now we go back to cash flows. Remember, everything is retirement cash flows, retirement cash flows. Now they got to pay some tax. They got to pull some money from their IRA in which to live on. And now, um, uh, let's see here. And Neil, oh, well, they also have some, they're living off their cash too. So here they're paying the whole thing from their IRA right here. The whole amount of money is coming from their IRA for which they got to pay tax on it. But Social Security kicks in here. So the annuity stops one, two, three, four, five, right there. Social Security kicks in there for Big Dan and Miss Ann. And watch what happens to their income, other income. Oops. Social Security. We're going to see Ann now has 10000 a month, a 10000 here of her own, but she's going to get about another $100 a month for a spousal benefit as well. Because this works real well for Dan to take his at 70 to ensure Ann gets the max when he dies first, but also because she doesn't really get a spousal benefit until he files. So this works well. It's kind of like me and Charlotte. Now, Dan's going to be about 2500 bucks a month. All right, so he'll get uh, $2,500 a month. That's not today's numbers. Um, that's uh, that's in future numbers, but it's not, I'm only inflating at 2.4. All right, so Dan's getting $2,500 a month. Ann's getting basically 1000 a month. So that's 3500 bucks a month for Social Security. All right, <clears throat> guaranteed. Oh, wait a second here. Dan's first full year, though. Look at that. Look at that. His first full year is when he's 71 years old. So he'll actually, between Dan and Ann, they're actually going to get $5,000 a month in Social Security, roughly. Because that's not his first full year. He only um, has Social Security benefits of you know, basically eight months or so. Now he's getting 12 months of Social Security benefits. Because he has delayed earnings credits, he's actually getting more than $2,500 a month, if that makes sense. This isn't for a full calendar year. I should have clarified that. This is for a full calendar year. This is his first full month of social, a year of Social Security. This is not his first full year of Social Security. First full year, look at that. 46000 a year plus and 16, uh, her benefit. We're going to get 65000 in Social Security. And again, people say, oh, how can that possibly be? Well, if we just look at how Social Security works, we're going to show you Dan's benefit. Here's Ann's benefit. It's only 1200 bucks a month. All right, but now we look at Dan's benefit. <clears throat> it's only twenty six eighty six a month at his full retirement age, but he's going to wait until he's seventy, so he's going to get three years of delayed earnings credits, which would be twenty four percent above the twenty six eighty six, and he's still getting cost of living adjustments at two point four percent. All right, so let's go back to cash flows. I hope this makes sense, man, because I mean this is it's pretty cut and dry. All right, so now. Right here, when Social Security is kicking in, they get $88,000 of income. They got their annuity. For, that's the last year of their annuity. And they're, of course, a reverse mortgage will stay. So when the annuity drops off, they're still going to have $78,000 of income. The full amount of Social Security plus their reverse mortgage, $78,000 of income. Uh, they have $78,000 of expenses, but because they're pulling a lot from their uh, reverse mortgage, there is no taxes due whatsoever, man. None. And now the fact they got, look at $85,000 of income, hardly any taxes due. In fact, I don't think, yeah, not until Dan dies, they pay any taxes, man. Because Social Security and reverse mortgage are tax-free. Uh, but a reverse mortgage is so expensive, it's going to hurt them in the long run. All right, so let's take a look here. They have positive cash flows here, man. So which means they can reduce the amount they take from the reverse mortgage. I, I just don't understand why people are so anti-reverse mortgage. It's crazy to me. So they get 80000 of income, which is 13447 I think, from the reverse mortgage. The rest comes from Social Security. They get $6,000 of required distributions, no taxes whatsoever. None. In fact, they have more money coming in than going out the door. So let's take a look at what it looks like the net worth. This is where I was going to say, oh, you're going to leave your kids no house. 
All right, so here we got six and a half percent. Uh, here we are at 86 years old for Miss Ann, 2046. That's gonna be 24 years from now. Will she survive? I have no idea. But the house is worth 952,000. I'm only giving a two and a half percent appreciation on the home. Uh, the mortgage, which they're paying six and a half percent interest, the reverse mortgage again, they're not paying it, is worth 860,000. There's still a ninety thousand dollar positive amount here. All right, so when they sell the house, the bank is the first 860, and the kids get whatever's left. But here they got in tax post tax assets three hundred thousand dollars because you can see non qualified, they've been adding it to it, adding it to it because they're not spending it all the money that they need, so they're adding to their non taxable portfolio. So their kids gonna inherit this tax free qualified assets, their kids are gonna inherit 168,000 bucks, which is exactly what we started with. So the kids, their total net worth is 559000 of which only 90000 I grant you, is in a home. But uh, the rest is, what's that, four, six or something like that is in liquid assets. And that's only with a 2.5% uh, annual appreciation on the house. I mean, we could put that three, let's, let's do 3%. And the, the tax are still, the, the interest is still 65 I mean, so if we do 3%, now we're, let's go to cash flows. How much are we living in the house now? Oh, we got a good net worth, blink. Now we're leaving 200,000 bucks. But does it matter? Because what if they don't even have kids? I just, I literally don't understand why people don't start looking more reverse mortgage, especially now with the interest rates are higher. This is primo time for reverse mortgages, man. All right, let's say they get a, we'll go to profile. Let's say they don't have any, let's say they have a 1% appreciation on their property instead of that. All right, 1% appreciation. And that will put them upside down, I would think, on the house. Let's take a look. Retirement. Cash flows. Still not run out of money. Cash flows. Net worth. Yeah, so here are their upside down the house. Oh no, upside down the house. They owe 860,000. It's only worth 678,000. You know who's upside down? It's not the kids. The bank. The bank says we're going to sell the house and we're going to we're going to we're going to literally come and take proceeds of the house upon the death of the surviving spouse. This will be Ann. Uh we you guys owe us 860,000 bucks, but we're only going to get 678,000. That's that's sucks to be the bank, but that's the way it is. The kids walk away with this right here. There's no obligation to make the difference in these two properties from here. That's why it's called a non-recourse loan. That's why the fees are high on the front end because they have to ensure that the bank can continue to operate in a way to do business. It only makes sense, man. Anyway, those two tricks save the retirement plan. Nothing fancy. It's crazy. Yeah, love to hear your thoughts. Tell me how bad reverse mortgages are again and annuities. Dave Ramsey. All right, we'll see you.